Good morning, everyone. How are you today? I am testing some new equipment and going to finish up a project that I started on the Tuesday Live. Um, I'm double checking my equipment and making sure that we are live on Facebook also. So give me just a second. If you're out there, say hello. Tell me that you can hear me, see me. Okay. While I try to get the Facebook link up. Make sure it's working. Anybody out there this morning? Good morning. It says we are live on YouTube. Not finding it on Facebook yet. So let me pull Facebook up on my phone to see if I can see it. How is everyone this morning? We're going to finish uh, one of the pieces, at least one of them, that I started the other night. Um, still not seeing the Facebook feed. So, if you're on Facebook and you can see me, say hello, tell me where you're from. I'm still not seeing it. Anybody out there? Hey, Marie. Thanks for joining. Can't stay long. Okay, I understand. I, this is mainly, I'm going to just finish up the project I started the other night, and uh, I wanted to test this new software that I'm using, and I didn't want to do it in prime time, so to speak. So hopefully, um, I still can't see the Facebook feed. I'm not sure why it's not... Um, coming up but let me try one more thing before I start okay all right let's see if this is gonna work it's getting warmer here today so that's a good thing um, boy I still can't see it on Facebook and it will not let me go live so naturally of course you know that's the way it is so what I'll do is I'll just uh, share this to Facebook real quick before I get started this new software you know you just never know about it. you can't live with it and can't live without the technology so give me one second I'm almost done. Hold on. So many ways to get to things. That's crazy. And watch. It'll probably uh, pop up and share. There we go. And paste that naturally. It won't paste it. All right, we are good. All right, so let's go back over here. All right, I'm going to switch to my overhead camera. All right, so this is the one I started the other night. Um, I got the pink ones fairly finished, and I was working on the blue ones. So we did one coat. So what I've done is... Um, put CC 151, 50, and 52. And then I've mixed these all 50-50 with gloss medium, okay, uh, to create what in my world, in Colors for Earth, would be equivalent to a color stroke. 
So it's going to allow these colors to move. I can manipulate them and uh, be able to blend them together. Okay. So um, I think you can see my palette. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to use the medium sumi brush. Okay. The, all of these products are available on the Colors for Earth website, which is listed at the bottom of your screen there. So I'm going to load about halfway up with it and I'm going to pat in the light color out at the tip of the flower petal and I'm working it back and forth until it's smooth and I'm coming back about halfway with that color. Then I'm going to turn my piece around and I'm going to leave that in my brush. I'm going to pick up the 151 and start near the center of the flower and work it back. When you're doing that, you've left that first color in your brush so it's going to blend them as they get together and now I'm going to pick up the 52 which is the darkest and add more of a shadow near the bottom. I usually do this at least twice on an area before I move to the next one. You can do it three times then what you want to do is just wipe wipe on your sponge just very quickly done over with just to get the blue, the darker blue out of your brush. So load back up with the light blue. Pat that color in. This particular one rolls around the side of the piece. Come about halfway down with that color. Turn your piece. And it's very important to turn your piece so that you get the brush. You tuck the color where you want it, in other words. So you don't want to work at it backwards because then you won't get the blending. And because of the fact that I left the other color on the brush, it's going to blend into that. Otherwise, you would have this like stark straight line of that piece. Okay. I'm not sure if the Facebook thing is messing up or not. I just got a notification. <laughs> Hold on one second. Let me double check over here. It may end up doing it. Okay, so then wipe off your dark. Okay, it did. So it's going to be up there twice. I have a feeling. Yep. I'm going to have to set it for a uh, like five minutes before or something. It doesn't want to uh, come in. So those of you that are just joining on the live Facebook, I'm just finishing up what I started Tuesday night, working with color concentrates at the moment, mixed 50-50 with the gloss medium. The gloss medium for the earthenware people is my clear glaze, okay? So I'm mixing equal parts. It's my clear glaze, but you do not want to use this if you're mid-range 05, or excuse me, 5-6 cone, stoneware, porcelain, anything. You do not want to use my clear. You want to use someone else's clear. So now I picked up the 151, and I'm putting it where the shadow would be. And then I'm going to pick up 52, and I've not rinsed my brush at all. I'm just keeping those colors on there. That way you don't waste your product for one thing, and it makes a better blend if you have that last color in your brush. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm always tucking it. Hi, Ann. If you put the layering mix on a piece of glass, would this work on top of it? That's a good question. Um, you could do it with just the color concentrates on glass okay so yes if you did a say a pour that had the layering mix in it put a white base down or whatever color a light color and then come back and do the shading actually i have a video out there it's a rectangle piece that i stenciled and i did some blue flowers in the corners go check it out because that's going to help you Ann, on that okay hi bobby thank you this is just a little um Thing that I started Tuesday night. So when you're done with the dark color, you're going to go back and wipe off the dark before you go back to the light. Okay. Let me uh, switch camera views real quick and see if 
Okay, so that's not the one I wanted. Okay, overhead. I think you can see the palette. I was going to get the palette in there, but this is better. So I'm going to pat in the color. I'm using the medium sumi brush. Come halfway back. I'm going to do a couple of these. They're so small, I think, on this bud that I can do all of them before. You want to work wet on wet. So make sure you have enough time. So if it's a large area, only do one section or one petal. I'm going to tip directly into the 151. And all of these colors I'm using are the color concentrates that have been mixed 50-50 with the gloss medium. And even if you're on mid-range doing cone 5, cone 6, you can still mix the medium. Just don't use that medium for your clear. You want to use your regular cone 5, cone 6 clear glaze. If you're on earthenware, which is what I'm working on, then you would apply our clear glaze or whoever's you're using. Of course, it's always better if you use mine because they work well with my products. You start mixing apples and oranges, we call it, and you tend to, um, you can have issues, okay? When you're done, then just wipe out the excess. Okay, so... I'm trying to see if there's any comments. Hey, Becky. Can everybody, I'm assuming everybody can hear me. What time on Tuesday nights is your group? On Tuesday night, we are doing 7.30 Central Time, Anne. And uh, next Tuesday night, I'm showing how to do this rainbow vase. This is all done with clear glass, our enamels. There's multiple firings. It does have the paste also. So this is next Tuesday nights, and I will put out a notification on that uh, today, more than likely. Okay. All right. So now I've got two coats on that. So I think I'm good. All right. Um, I'm going to go over to this piece. I had shown you how to do it. So this has got like one coat on it. I've done a watercolor background, and let me just, I need to finish the rest of this with that watercolor background. It sounds good. Okay, thanks, Bobby. So what I've done is I've taken the 655 Ocean Blue Green and I've put some out. I've also put some water in another well. So we're gonna make a wash. When you make a wash of color, you never take color and add the water to it. You add the color to the water. You add it to the lightest. Water is gonna be our lightest because you could end up with a lake before you get to a wash. I'm going to do two healthy scoops with that brush. And then as you're working, you need to make sure that you keep that stirred up because the color is heavier than the water and it's going to fall to the bottom. So I'm stirring every time and I'm changing the direction of my brush. Do you see that? I'm moving around. I call this slip slap mush mush and you're constantly changing direction. That way you don't get a footprint of the brush. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. If you have any questions, put them up there. I am by myself uh, today, so if I don't see them, I will go back and answer them later. We are thankfully getting warmer today. We're at 30. We were, we've been iced in for three days. So hopefully things will improve today. And get back to normal and I can get some shipping done if I can get where I can pack the orders waiting for some of that ice to melt although we ended up being luckier I think than uh, the Austin Texas area a friend of mine sent me pictures and her trees were breaking the limbs were breaking off the ice was so thick on it so I should count myself lucky all right, so see how I do that? Just constantly changing the direction. I'm not worried about these little leaves because they're going to be green. And I may not have time to finish this whole piece, but that way, if you didn't catch the other night, you can see how that is done. All right, so I'm going to add some more water. Um, if you have I, distilled water would be recommendation. Uh, 
sometimes you don't know what's in your water. I'm doing two healthy scoops of that 655 Ocean Blue Green. And the color stroke that I'm using for this background, color strokes have, there's a little bit of a dark area, so I'm just going back over that. Okay. So, on both platforms, whoever's on Facebook and YouTube, can you tell me if the feed is good, the video, no lagging? It shouldn't be. I just got fiber put in, but you never know. Any questions? I'm just going back over, kind of meeting that line where I started the other day. Okay, I think we're good. Looking good here. Thanks, Christine. All right, how about on YouTube? It looks like everything is good from here. Okay, so one of the tips I told you the other night was with your Mr. Bottle, um, not one of those uh, ones that have the pump. You want to have the mist. You can actually mist your piece to see what it's going to look like when it's fired. It'll give you a, a truer... Uh, coloring. So if you're unsure if you put one coat on this petal or two coats, you can do that. The other little trick is you can take that Stadler Tri Plus Fine Liner. It's got it like a Sharpie point and you can put a couple of little dots out to the side. I don't know that you can see that. See the little dots? And that would indicate you've got two coats on there. Um, you can actually do it directly on the petal. I used to do that all the time. So if you've got a piece that's got tons of leaves or tons of flowers and it's hard to get keep track of it or you need to come back to it because you had to walk away that's a good way to be able to keep track of it okay so I'm going to go back to the light blue fully load that sumi brush and I'm going to go ahead and put the second coat on this guy I don't remember if I did two or three the other night but we're going to add another one all right, then I've got a little bit too much on my brush. So I'm going to wipe a little bit of that off, pick up the middle blue, and then go over here and pat it in, and then pick up the darkest blue and pat it in and work it back. So that's your shadow. So if you wanted to come down the side, you could do that. Then I'm going to wipe, wipe. Okay, let's zoom in just a little bit. All right, there we go. So see the one I did the other night? You can see these are still wet, but if I wanted to create those folds, so if you have like a dip in your petal or whatever you're working on, you can rinse your brush or you can keep, if you feel like you're lifting the paint off, then put the last color in your brush, then go to whatever color you're trying to put on. But if you're not, and I'm going to leave these in there because it's got all the colors, I'm just going to tip into that dark color and very little on there. And I'm going to tuck it where I want it. Um, let's do one coming out from the middle here. So I'm going to tuck it and pat it in. And then I'm just going to slide. Tuck and slide. So I can make a fold. I could do another one. I can also do this with a liner. I'm going to go back with just a clean brush and soften that. So I'm going to rinse my uh, brush, drag off to a point to get most of the water out of the brush, get a tiny, tiny bit of the darker blue. So if I wanted, say over here, a fold to come in, I'm going to pat it in place, and then I'm just going to pull it down. And that will give me like a fold or a pleat in it. Okay. My phone's going off the hook here. <laughs> All right, so let's go back to pat it in, light color on the outside, come about halfway down, turn the piece around, pick up the middle blue, pat it in, work your way about halfway back. This is called a two color blend. And when we add the third color, it's going to be a three color blend. So I'm picking up a little bit of the dark on the brush. Wet on wet when you're doing this. Do not let it dry because you need that wet because you see the brush has all three colors on it. So when you set that down, if 
find a piece of paper. When you set that down and you look at it, see how it it's going from light to dark? That's what you want to happen on your piece. So that's why you're going to keep that color. When you're done with the dark, wipe, wipe on your, let me move this over so you can see it. Just two wipes and that's it on your sponge. Okay. All right, so let's do this one here. Pat it in. And I've got some textured pieces, Cone 5-6, um, that I need to bisque. And I'm going to show you how to do this on a textured piece. Um, if I don't get to it before Clay Share, that will be one of the Clay Share demos. So if you're part of the Clay Share group, I will be on Wednesday night, Friday, and Saturday with some different techniques and projects. So please join me. If you don't know what Clay Share is, you can... Uh, Go to ClayShare on Facebook and check it out. And then they have a Prime where it's a membership. Okay. Wipe, wipe. Go back to my light. And I'm out of light, so that's good because then you'll get to see that mixed up. So I'm taking the 150 Light Cerulean, putting out about a nickel size. And then I'm taking the Gloss Medium. And I'm putting equal parts. And then I stir with my handle of my brush. Because if you stir with the hairs of the brush, you're going to waste your product. Okay? We don't want to do that. It costs too much to waste. Alright. So here is this one. I'm going to wrap it around the edge a little bit. Just in case. So pat it in. So you're almost putting two coats on because of the application. Do not rinse the brush. Pick up the middle value of blue or whatever color combination you're using. And work that halfway back. And I'm pressing down all the way. So that that color bleeds from one into the other. And you get a nice transition of color from one to the other. Any questions about what I'm doing? Is anybody still out there? Okay, wipe off. Once you get that looking the way you want it, wipe, wipe, and then you would go back and do another. So let's go ahead and go over here. I just wanted to, since I started these, I thought, well, I'll just finish them up and that way I can maybe get them in the kiln. in the next day or so. Middle value, turn the piece around, work. So you're tucking that color where you want it, and then I'm patting it down, pat, 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 and blending it to that other color. And I'm, you notice I'm not doing it just one time. I'm doing it multiple, back and forth. Grab the dark color, add it, and I'm going to come up the side just a little bit. If I were going to do a shadow, I would aim the brush this way as I come up the side. But uh, that one's on the bottom, which I should have started with that one. Actually, you should start with the leaves. Wipe, wipe. I usually work from the background forward, but since I have this color out, I just thought I would go ahead and do these real quick. The ceruleans are, this is light cerulean, cerulean, and deep cerulean are one of my favorite colors. You'll probably notice that. I use them a lot. Alright. Any questions? Nothing. Okay. I'm just double... I have to stop and look up when you're by yourself. You know, to see what... If anybody's commenting. Grab the dark without washing. Pick that up. All right, wipe, wipe. Go back to the light. Get that in there. About halfway back. And I just sketched the pattern on with just very light pencil, which will burn off. There are different ways to transfer patterns, and I've got other videos. 
and I'll try to do some just short clips on just transferring so they're easier to find. Pat, 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 pat to work that in back and forth. Grab the dark, tuck it in, and walk it back. Okay, wipe, wipe. All right, back to light. And I should have turned this where it's like this. It's so much easier when you turn your piece. That's why I had the Lazy Susan, but because of my amount of space and turning this so much, I thought I'd pick it up instead of leaving it on there. I don't want to knock things over. But turntables are great. Just a little Lazy Susan. Or if you've got the uh, Shimpo short banding wheel, you could also use that. So this one, if I want that pedal to go underneath that one, then I can aim where I want that shadow to be. You'll notice that if it starts getting dry, you'll see more of the lines as you're patting. You'll, it'll start to grab because it's not all moist it's dry so it's sucking up the moisture that's in the brush okay and then we'll turn it around grab the light blue again the light cerulean again these are the color concentrates mixed with the gloss medium i'm gonna add just a little bit more so keep that brush fully loaded the sumi brushes really hold a lot of product and are great it's one of the reasons I designed them is for this particular technique. So I've been doing this type of blending, shading, and app applying color for probably over 30 years. I think it was right at 30 years now that I designed these. I have a little something there. Grab the dark. So just keep pressing with it while it's wet on wet. You can move it around and see on the top of my brush there's still quite a bit of the dark but on the bottom it's all blended see the difference there so if I were to turn my brush over I could deposit more of that dark color in a different area and then blend it together wipe wipe and go to your next one so you would do this two times at least because if you only do it once it's going to be a very light application the first time sometimes you see your lines where you meet and blend the second application it tends to soften out and it's not as noticeable and then if you were to do if you want it really really solid you could do three coats um, Usually two is good enough. If you keep that brush loaded, you should be good. But keep it very moist with color. I mean, there's a lot of color. You see the sheen on the brush. A lot of product still on there. Wipe, wipe for the dark. Now, I'm getting ready to start my second coat. I'm going to go back over here on this guy. And go right back in. I did not rinse my brush. Set it down, set it down. Mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right, walk it to the left. Turn the piece around. Pick up the middle color. And then the dark color. working it in now that's two coats what are we going to do we're going to indicate with a marker that i have two coats on there so let me i'm going to go to the side and the overhead camera so that you can see the amount of pressure that i'm putting down on the brush hopefully that will help everybody tell me if you can see that side camera press it down set it down set it down mush 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 work it halfway back and then we're going to pick up the middle color 
So you're going right over the top of everything you did. You're going to cover that dark. Can you see the pressure? I'm pushing all the way down on the bristles. You're not hard because you don't want to come up here to the ferrule, the metal part, and end up breaking the hairs, but you are pressing all the way down. I'm not up on my tippy toes like this. Okay, I'm pressing it down. Working it, working it, and then wipe. And what are we going to do? We are going to put two dots beside that one. So that I remember. It's hard to keep track of it with everything. <laughs> and there's so many petals. And what I do, I just did at the wrong angle. I want to go this way. halfway turn and now pick up just on the tip the middle color go right over that dark and everything start where it's the darkest and then work your way back because then it deposits the darkest color where the darkest area is and by the time you come back on the piece you have less on your brush I'm gonna grab a little bit more dark the other thing that's key is to make sure that your product is the same consistency so just double check that usually the darker the color wipe wipe um, the thicker the product will be okay two dots so I know I've got two coats and now I'm going to this one hopefully those are some tips and things that maybe will make your color decoration easier Any questions? Anything you want to see in the future? Would you rather have just demonstrations? Would you rather have full projects? I may put a poll out there. I don't know if I can do that on my uh, my Facebook page, but I can. I think I can do it on the company page. So if you're not um, wipe wipe, this one already had some on it. So now I've got two on that one. Now if all you were doing is two, then you wouldn't have to dot. Okay. And I'm going to go run back over here and do this one. Uh, be sure and uh, like our company Facebook page, Colors for Earth. And if you're a glass person using our glass products, and you haven't asked to join you should have got a piece of paper in your order that says you know ask to join our private facebook group you have to have purchased the glass products to get on there and you have to answer the questions and that page is cfe which stands for colors for earth glass color artist cfe glass color artist wipe wipe to get rid of the dark I'm just going to put my dots there, but you have to answer those questions. Okay, so let's do, so you can see the second coat goes much faster than the first. Grab the middle color and the dark color. And I've got a piece of something there. Wipe, wipe. Put my dots. Okay, you could do this with the color strokes. Also, you would not have to add the medium. It already has a medium in there. It has a um, opaque medium to make them opaque an opacifier so and they ha have enough of a gel base that you can do the exact same process which i did on the pink flowers uh, tuesday night so if you go back and watch that wipe wipe you can see that turn it around the middle color and 
I don't see any comments. You guys are quiet. Like I said, I wanted to do this during the day where it, it messed up. <laughs> it wouldn't matter as much, so to speak, when you're testing things. Wipe, wipe. Light color. Turn it around. Middle value. So the semi brushes are great for this. You can do solid application with them. You can do the blending techniques. You can do the shading. I mean, there's so many things that you can do. I think I'm going to have just enough to finish this one. This is my last petal. And then take my dark. You see the brushes all the way down. Because you're trying to blend it into the other colors. If you use all the color that's on your brush before you add the next color, put the first color back in your brush before you do it. That way you've got it. Alright, I'm going to rinse my brush. And I'm going to go back to the other piece while this is drying. Okay, and we're going to do some more of these um, folds. Okay, so I'm going to, I think you can see over here on the side camera, on my water bowl, I'm getting water in the brush, and then I'm dragging off the side. Actually, uh, let's go back. Let me show you real quick so I'm putting my brush in the water I'm dragging it off dragging it off turn and drag turn and drag so that I have a nice point but I still have a lot of water and then I'm gonna tuck it into the color okay and now we're gonna go back to this one and I'm gonna tuck it up here pat it in and then slide and just kind of lift off of it quickly I've got enough water in my brush that if I wanted to do another one, like over here, tuck it in and slide. That's how I did the leaves, was a tuck and slide. Okay. Um, I used uh, 161. I put it up. Hold on. So 161, I, I base coated these leaves with 660 color stroke green two coats with the sumi brush I use the small sumi brush and now I'm going to use 161 green leaf to shade it with I'm just going to go back over this so you can see it again okay so I'm going to do that water load drag off to a point tuck into my color very little color on the brush and I first I shaded it down below let's just do one and this one will just be darker so I tuck it in and pat it. So there's water on my brush and then the color. So it's bleeding back into nothing. If you start lifting off, then put your base color back in your brush, then tip into the darker shade and do the same thing. Sometimes, especially if you have a hard spot or a hot spot on your piece, on your earthenware, that can happen. I'm going to grab just a little more of that green and I'm going to tap in here and slide to the end. So that's how I'm going to shade. Okay, hopefully you can see that on that side camera. You're, I'm sorry. Okay. Hey, Pat. I am seeing the follow through from last night. Yes, yes. Stumbled on. Yeah. I, I you know, I, I'm testing some equipment. So that's um, kind of one of the reasons that I didn't do it at night. I did it during the day. That way, if I mess up, it's not as big of a goof up, you know. So, I'm going to, I've got this new thing that I can switch cameras, which is kind of cool. So, here's my overhead, okay. Um, let me also show you. So, those of you that are my earthenware people, here is some examples of what the product will do 
on just your regular cast wear, okay, your 0406 wear. Um, the Butterfly Dish is a free project on the website. Um, the Toucan book is really cool because it shows you multiple surfaces with that on it. All of this is 0406 on these. Can it be done on a mid-range 056? Absolutely. Um, I'm going to pop up. These are some cone 56 things that I've done in the past. And if you go to the blog on the website, you can find those pages if you just type in clay share. Good morning, Eddie. Eight degrees in Wyoming. Well, we're up to 31. Woohoo! <laughs> I have like six inch icicles out there from the ice storm yesterday, so I'm hoping that it uh, melts away. Okay. And then if you're a glass person uh, joining, these are some examples of some of the glass, fused glass that I've done. And then next Tuesday night, we're doing the uh, bandana looking vase, the glass vase in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to show you multiple uh, steps on it. Okay. We do have kits available on the website. We've got glass kits. We've got the color concentrate kits, the color strokes. So there's lots of different things out there and available. Okay. Let me go back to me for a second. Hi, good morning. Hey, this is working. I kind of like this, <laughs> being able just to do a touch. Let me show you. Uh, the website is listed at the bottom of your screen, but this is the website here. Okay. If you've not joined or we switched to a new uh, newsletter service, so be sure and fill that out. You can just exit out. This is kind of interactive. So um, if you go to the education tab and you go to video tutorials and you scroll down anything you want to learn you can just click on these buttons and they go over to YouTube okay I'm not gonna click on it because there's no way to go backwards on it alright under the uh, free techniques is like the butterfly bowl that I was telling you about so there's different things out here okay um, and then the YouTube, some of you are on YouTube, some of you are not, but if you're not, be sure and this is what it'll look like. It'll have my name, the Colors for Earth logo. Be sure and subscribe, like, comment, share. That helps me get out there and be in front of more people. Okay. All right. So let's go back to our overhead. What'd you think of that? Was that kind of cool to be able to show you all that? Am I having, okay, hold on. I'm going to read a comment from Facebook. Are you having any trouble with color sticking or lifting more on new talcless? You know what, Christine? I've not used any of that. I have so much bisque in storage from doing 14 years of retreats, leftovers and stuff that I haven't had. It. Have you used my product on some of that? If you do, I would say definitely add some of the um, gloss medium to it. It'll give it more tackiness. But I have not. Um, so if you're out there and you've used the tap list with our products, please comment or um, I'll ask that question on Facebook separately, Christine, and maybe we can get some answers from... Okay, so what I did was just water load and drug off to a point and I'm just going to tuck and shade there. Okay. All right, so let's do the detail. I'm going to use the 3600 number two liner. Always wet your brush and clean this out. So I've got uh, the 161. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of 162 and it's a thick color. Always shake your colors before you use them. Um, they're thixotropic, meaning they congeal when they sit still. So you think you're empty and you're not. So shake. I'm going to grab a little bit of that dark and just mix it in there to make a darker color. Dip my brush in water to thin that out a little bit and then pull it out. See how I'm just constantly pulling? So I'm coating the hairs. It would be like shampooing your hair. Okay, coat those hairs and get it in there. My phone is going crazy. All right, so what I'm going to do is just pull in that stem and center vein. 
I like to do, you can do this with the green or you could come back with black if you wanted. You guys tell me, do you want me to do detailing with black after I get my stems in? You guys are going to broadcast video tech is fun. It is <laughs> when it works, when it works, Eddie, when it works. Oh, really? When you retire from teaching? Well, be sure and get with me. I would love to know more. I'm trying to learn on my own. And the program that I'm using today is cheaper than what I was doing before. So I'm trying to cut cost. Not quality, but this is like a lifetime membership versus a yearly membership. So that makes a huge difference for sure. Okay, not yet. Converting... Oh, Christine's going to convert her shop to the Talclas. Yeah, I, I I can't tell you. But if you'd like to send me a couple of pieces, I'd be more than happy to demonstrate on them and test them for you. Absolutely. And let you know. That's the only way I'm going to know if it works or it doesn't work. So I'm just going through here and pulling in that center vein and stems. Grabbing color. Hopefully you can see. I'm trying to tilt it so you can see it. Pull it in. Stay up on the tippy toes. Okay. You want to make sure you're on the tip to keep it nice and fine. So I'm just adding that little calic area and coming down. Well, when I retire, I just want to paint and not have to work <laughs> and fill and do all this other stuff. It, people don't realize the amount of time that goes into just maintaining a website or anything. Now, if you want side veins on this guy, you can add those in here. And everybody details and outlines different. Uh, usually people can look at a piece and they know it's mine just because of the way I paint, and I'm sure yours is the same way. Whoop. Get that hair back in place. So just up on the tippy toes. Okay. Yeah, I'm hoping everything melts. Um, if you're watching this at a later date, we've been what did they say on the news? It will be 80 hours between the temperature of 24 and 30, I think, freezing in Dallas-Fort Worth area. Massive. Everybody finally got smart, although there was quite a few wrecks yesterday and stayed at home, you know. I mean, it's like, why get out there and jeopardize your health and your vehicle? <laughs> okay. So on the centers of the flowers, I'm going to use, again, shake your colors up really well. I'm going to use CS632 Buttercup. You could use a color concentrate. You don't have to use this. It's just what I've got sitting out. I'm also going to use my stubby brush. It's a uh, like a mongoose brush. It's a stiffer hair, so it's great for stippling because you can get like highs and lows. So I'm just going to stipple on that color to get a base in there. Let's turn it around and get this one. Yeah, so the Facebook feed didn't want to cooperate this morning. So I'm going to have to set the timer for a couple of minutes earlier. It's like delayed on when it goes up. Okay. Then, so a lot of times I will base coat with the color stroke. And then I'll come back with the color concentrates. And I will make something darker. Just because it's a more intense color. Okay, so I'm going to use Curry. Hopefully, I don't have a lot in here, but I'm going to get some out of there no matter what. Whoops, and I just made a mess of my water. Wasn't thinking. So 
Sorry about that. All right. Yes, I did. I'll just leave that there. All right. I need to get a new bottle of that. So I'm going to just pick up, I'm going to kind of blot out whatever was in my brush, pick up some of that. And then I'm just going to, and I'm really pouncing it out. I'm giving it a real bad hair day, I call it. See, it's very fuzzy and open. And then I can come back and just gently tap and you get like little tiny dots basically and I didn't have to take a liner or a stylus and put those on there and you see all those little it's like little fuzzy and just tickle it I call it just barely touch you're just trying to take the color off of the tip of that bristle okay all right then you would rinse And wipe that out till it's clean okay so I know I outlined this one with well I can do this one too I can do it with the blue if I can get a hold of my brush it's being difficult so I'm just gonna thin one corner of my blue so I've just added a brush load of water and then I'm just gonna kind of make sure it's coated okay and I'm going to go over here to this guy. Um, let's do side and overhead so you can kind of see how much my brush is pressing down. So very little, but you can press and get a heavier or a thicker line, like a thick and thin. Okay, see the amount of pressure? So watch that side camera. Press and lift, press and lift press and lift so that gives you that way if you you know if you try to be absolutely perfect and get the same size line around something and you don't then it's more noticeable so I used to tell my students if you do the thick and thin then you don't have to worry about being perfect how's that I have the color concentrates Pat says I think I need the gloss medium yeah um if you're you're working on mid-range come five six pat the gloss medium we have that you can buy it separately csp01 is the number or just search for gloss medium in the search bar it comes in multiple sizes you don't need a lot of it you can see it goes a long ways so um you know you could buy an eight ounce or a four ounce, whatever. But you're not going to use it for the clear glaze. You're only going to use it to do the blending if you're trying to do it and maybe it's not working as well for you. Press and lift, press and lift, press and lift. That would be one solution. Or maybe you're just not keeping enough on your brush. Could be the other reason. Because I know when I did um, the clay share videos, which you can find on my blog, I've got to turn this so I can get to this guy. Sorry. Um, I believe I had the medium mixed in it because that's the way I normally work when I'm doing blending. Okay. Five, six. Yeah. So you might want to, next time you order, pick up a, a bottle of that. So now I'm just going to put in my fine lines. Just touch, make some of these detail lines long and short. Okay, let's go back to this guy. Long and short. Don't make them all the same length. So even though I've got those shading lines and I try to anchor with my pinky or I'm resting on my piece as long as there's not anything wet. So this just adds another depth to your shading by adding those fine lines and see how I'm constantly working and loading till I get to a nice fine point take your time if you take the time and load the brush it's going to work for you better guaranteed okay guaranteed all right so I'm going to pull some lines here this is hard to do on this curved surface 
Now, I'm not necessarily going to put any on the bud because these are coming out from the uh, from the outside. You would see those on the inside of the flower. But that doesn't say you can't do it because you can. Um, I need to outline that one. I used uh, 132 Deep Cranberry on it. And sometimes I just put, if I'm out of space, I just put me a little dot there. And then just work with that. Again, work it into the bristles. Achieve your point. And then go to your piece. Thick and thin. Pressure. So a brush stroke is a combination of color, pressure, and motion. So whether you've got one color on it or you've got multiple colors, then the motion that you do with it and the amount of pressure will determine how large or the size of that brush stroke. So, Pat, the word... Um, Correct. You're correct. So Pat's making a, um, it's like a medium in the acrylic world. So the non-fired world, the word medium is like an extender and opener. So when you add that to our products, you are keeping it open longer so that you can manipulate and move it around. So yes. And you may have heard me say that before, but yeah, that's exactly right. So if I were not going to put any black on this piece, I would just take my dark green that I no, I use this green I use the 61 this is 62 yes I did do my I'm losing track I added it and had a mix of it so I did not outline and you know what I don't think I am going to outline with that I'm going to show you let me rinse the center of my palette out I'm going to show you black because even though I do it with a color I go back and I call Call it like you accent with the black. So think of it this way, that your um, first color on there is a trial run. It's your practice. And I'm wiping the water out of my palette because if you've got water in there, it's going to run and beat up. It's not going to allow you to get a proper load. So let's get us some black. Again, shake. Can you hear that? Got to shake it up. Put a little bit out. And then we're going to thin it. So your color was your practice run. And I just thin one little corner. I don't thin the whole puddle. It's going to evaporate. You're going to have to just keep thinning it. So just do one side of it that you can load and work with. Really work it into your brush, get a nice fine point. And now, and I'm going to move this turntable. I can come back and now I can accent my center. And maybe I'm just going to kind of give it a wiggly, wavy line, just so it's not perfect. And I'm going to come in on top of or beside, and I don't have to be. An exact. I'm gonna thin that just a little bit more. If it's grabbing on the the wear, then you need to thin it just a little bit more. Okay, anchoring my pinky. But maybe I just want to accent like that. Now I will come in, and I'll just accent fine, 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 fine lines. Also, because remember that burgundy color, the deep cranberry, was another level of shading. So this is your detail. I'm going to pull some there. So does that help give you some, you know, ideas on how to shade detail? I'm going over here on the side. It's hard to do it when I'm but watch how I'm going to stand this up a little bit so you can see. So I am just barely touching, just dragging on the tip of that to achieve those fine lines. OK. 
okay. And then this is actually another petal over here. And if I don't do it right now, I'll forget it. Okay. You can also take your black and you could add some little dots around. Just with, I call them little tick marks just around that center just to make it look darker. You could do it with um, burnt sienna, a brown, if you wanted. You could also come over here and you can create like a divot where it would be the impression that it's lower by just adding that. So now you've got another depth on that petal, or excuse me, center. Okay. You like the black? Okay, good. I, you know, some people do, some people don't. Um, I'm traditionally, I'm a black outliner. Uh, when I do my glass painting, it's hard for me not to have an outline. So I did right beside that green. You see that? It's not on it completely. And then a lot of times I will just do one side of my leaf if it's a small. If it's large, I'm going to do both, okay? But let's say that I had a side that, gosh, it, my brush went wacky and maybe I need to clean something up. That's where if you just do the one side. You also got to look at the overall design and say, you know what? I'm afraid too much black, especially on those smaller areas, smaller leaves, would be too strong and bold. And that's why I only do one side. So keep that in mind when you're doing your designs. So once again, I can come in here and just thick and thin. Thick, pressure, pressure, lift off. Line, 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 very fine. It's just to reinforce what's already there. But look at that, isn't that pretty? And then I can come back and put some tendrils in with the green after I'm done. That way my black is underneath. Okay, so you can clean up that edge if you needed to. I'm going to go down here. Now here I may do both sides of that little pod on the end. Very sketchy. Um, you know, I used to try to be absolutely perfect, and then I finally realized if I'm not perfect and do a wiggly, um, loose, then people don't notice it if I do mess up. Now, let's say that I made a really thick line and I had all thin. I would just come back over here and just thicken one of those, and then it would balance out the design. Okay? And this one's kind of lost until it shows up, so I'm going to add just a small amount on that one. Okay, so we did a wiggly, just to make it look textured. And then you can tap or you could go get your stylus, your dot maker, and do individual little dots. This is just a little more random size. You know, everything's not the same. So it depends on what you like. It pulls it all together. You're right, Pat. Yeah, it does. And then we have that little divot, remember, so we can create that shape and then add some other little marks around it. Okay, fully load. And we need to add one here, maybe a little bit there. Okay. Now, if you're on earthenware and you're using my glaze, you don't have to wait 24 hours. I glaze right away. Um, and this, I think, would apply... Well, I've done it. Um, I will mist my wear, and I'll show you on this piece when I'm done. I mist it with that water bottle that I was using earlier. And stay six inches back. Let the wet sheen go away. And then you can dip or you can brush on your glaze. 
the myth of letting it dry 24 hours so it doesn't smear it's wrong if you think about it you are putting wet on wet when you're adding the glaze so if your surface is wet it's going to work better so if you've got dry powdered color setting on the surface I got an area I can't get um, you're just pulling it across okay and that's and, or if you overwork uh, your glaze as you're applying it that can cause your colors to smear um, if you do too much heat work in the kiln that can cause your colors to run the cobalts especially so you're gonna have to just test your kiln your glazes everybody if you're cone five six mid-range um, I have been using the Mako uh, SW004 zinc free and really am liking it it holds the greens really well um, I'm getting ready to do more tests on the pinks and purples but I have found that that's a really nice clear. I've used Jessica's 2167, um, the Amico HF9. So whatever you're using, test my colors with it so that you know your application, what's going to happen, and how it fires. Okay. Do a little bit on that one here. This is a little bit bigger one, so I'm going to add that on there. So just loosey-goosey, I call it. I Pat says, I wouldn't be such of a chatty patty next time. I miss going to the class. No, you're fine. You're fine. At least somebody's talking to me. Sometimes I feel like I'm on here by myself. You know? So I love it don't have to apologize for that the only way you learn is if you ask questions okay now this side is a little off for me so I'm gonna put my outline on that side remember how I told you sometimes I tend to do the same side on everything but look at that isn't that soft pretty kind of contemporary okay um, I am going to go ahead and sign while I have this in my brush. And I usually try to tuck it in uh, somewhere. But it's with the same brush. A little bit more product. And it does take time to learn how to control it, the brush. But you can learn to do it. And I gotta remember we're in 23. It's hard to write that. All right, we need to go back and add some tendrils real quick. And I'm gonna use that uh, laurel green, a little bit of the green leaf. Um, when you're doing the tendrils, uh, I don't know that I got anything you can. I don't have a piece of paper here. You, when you go into the curve, let me show you on this this piece so when you start you're going to start and you can press down but when you go into the curl you want to lift up on the tippy toe then you can press down and lift up and then press down okay so a lot of people don't realize they need to lift and they just keep going and it's see you can't turn it if the fat part of the brush or all the bristles are down you have to sit it down lift it up press lift it up press okay so that's a little tip practice that you can practice that on paper you can practice it with watercolor um, do you guys know that you can add food coloring to your like your glaze or you can use food coloring in your water and practice on bisque just fire that bisque to 04 again and the food coloring goes away you haven't ruined a piece at all so we're just going to add some curls here. I need to thin that down. And having it thin enough is, is another uh, 
thing you need to watch for. If you can't do the curls, watch this. You can just just kind of wave it a little bit and get away with it. It's the cheat, okay? You're just cheating. I call it cheating. See, I can just wiggle and wave and it's there. Kind of cool. All right, guys. Um, guess what? I'm not going to keep you any longer. I'm not going to go back and finish this uh, right now, but I will finish it later. So thank you for joining me. Let me switch my camera back. Hi there. Thanks for joining, and hopefully you got a little bit out of this. And I'll be back next Tuesday night, 7.30 Central Time, to do the glass rainbow vase, I call it. And I'll put an announcement out there about that so that you can click on it, and it will remind you. Okay? Happy painting. Have a safe and wonderful day. Thank you.